Hello everyone. Salam sejahtera. Welcome. 大家好 Welcome to join us. Oh, we're live. <laughs> hey, you are on time.、Mitch. Thank you. Yeah.、Uh, late by one minute, but yes. Nice to see you. Finally. You as well. <laughs> I was talking to my audience here in Facebook. Hello to all your viewers. Hi. Actually, you are the third person I speak to、uh, with this、uh, virtual meeting. I have spoken to two of my friends from、uh, Netherlands last week, and、okay. this week I speak to you、uh, from Czech Republic. How are you? Ah,、oh, pretty good.、Um, so about the coronavirus、uh, mm. situation here,、um, it's been a little bit crazy. And starting on the first of March. There was a complete lockdown. The COVID numbers were very high, and it threatened to collapse the healthcare system. So we couldn't really,、uh, we couldn't even travel between regions, and、um, they closed on everything that wasn't really just like essential shopping. Right now, we have curfew past 9 p.m. So if it's past 9 p.m., you should be at home unless you're traveling、mm. for work, or like you're walking your dog or something.、Um, mm -mm. Okay. And、uh, masks are obligatory in shops and on the public transport,、um, sometimes、mm -hmm. even on the streets. What is、But、the average、change. number of infections in Prague, especially? I'm not sure. There's actually a website you can look at by the Ministry of the Interior of the Czech Republic that has、um, statistics by region. In the entire Czech Republic.、Um, I haven't checked the numbers in about a week, but、uh, the highest we were at was close to like eighteen、uh, thousand cases. What the? F Just close.、Um, I'm not sure about hospitalizations versus confirmed cases, and、mm. we have two types of tests. We had like the antigen test and um, um, I think a PCP. I don't remember the exact name,、um, mm. but、uh, it was fairly high because if you don't know about the Czech Republic's population. Um, mm. The entire population is ten and a half million, approximately, but、okay. it was more concentrated in certain regions. Prague is is okay. Actually, I have several question to ask you. Is it could be a fun part doing this, asking you question, you know, then you answer me and see whether you are correct or not. Like a little、I、quiz、hope. or. <laughs> okay.、Right. Do you still remember where am I from? Well, I recall you were living in Malaysia. You are ethnically Chinese. You speak Mandarin. You have a good memory, I must say. Correct. I speak Mandarin. I'm a Malaysian Chinese. You are right. So kudos to you. <laughs>、uh, second question is: Do you still have any crew when? Did you host me in your apartment? I just mentioned the answer just now. Anyway, yeah, that was like two summers ago. I want to say July. It was sometime in the summer, maybe a little earlier. It was September twenty nineteen. Oh, September, really? Yes. I thought it was still、yeah. in the summertime. Okay, still good. You are quite close to the answer. Not too bad. Then,、uh, what was your first、uh, impression when you see me at your doorstep? Uh, you had a lot of bags. I was um. I thought uh, that uh, yeah, you looked kind of like a backpacker who'd been well traveled. You also had a really joyful smile. It's like okay, this guy probably has a great sense of humor. I don't like to judge by first first impressions, of course, but、uh, this is good.、Yep. Um, and also very polite.、Um, Thank you.、Um, you seem very happy to be in in Prague and excited to to spend some time、um, seeing it. I don't remember if you said it was your first time in Prague or not. Yes, it was. That was your first time, okay. It was my first、um, time in Prague, and you were my first host in Prague, also. Yep, I'm grateful and also thankful. I appreciate it. How many have you hosted so far? Um, about、uh, over twenty people I've met. Uh, it's unfortunately, I have、uh, not hosted anyone in over a year because. Mm. Um, once the、um, pandemic really started, and there were all these lockdown measures,、um, travel was not possible during many periods of time. So、yep. the government really took action in the middle of March last year、mm. in the Czech Republic, and we saw like a huge decrease in tourism and travelers. Yep.、Um, everywhere. Yep. Everywhere. Yeah, it was real sad. So. 
But uh, beforehand, uh, I was taking people when I could. Um, someone messaged me and I had free schedule. I'd usually say, say yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Seemed like uh, um, nice people who had interesting suggestions. I think it's nice to share that hospitality. Well, this is great. I must say that you are kind to do so. Usually, I try to uh, get this uh, CS platform to, to stay with somebody else with the locals to get to know the place uh, much better than what you can find in Google. This is um, mostly commercialized. Uh, things are not the best, but people get to know them from Google. And from the local, of course, we get to hear from you what's the best in town. You know? All these things you don't find in Google at all. So I try to usually do it with CS. And I, I send a lot of invite. I will find a verified account. I, will, I also read through all the profiles, references as well, you know, positive references, especially. Yes. Then uh, it's for me as an Asian, I find it very, very hard to get hosted. So when you did that, I really feel that I'm very happy, you know, but also excited to see you in person. <laughs> Am I the first Malaysian? And that's um, I ever hosted? Yeah. yeah. First Malaysian I've met, actually. <laughs> to my knowledge, you know, I don't always know where someone's from when okay. I meet them, but uh, so before, first person I know from Malaysia, yeah. So beforehand, you do not know Malaysia at all? Just um, from history class, just knowing about British colonialism, that's like very iffy. Um, we don't study um, Southeast Asia that much in uh, right. the US. How did you get to know CS? Yeah, um, I had a friend at the time who, um, he introduced me to Couchsurfers, the website. So um, my friend at the time told me a lot of really wonderful stories of um, not only meeting great people, but being able to travel in kind of a, a better way when you're meeting people and staying with them you get to try what they cook at home instead of what they cook at a restaurant. You get to hear how they talk and see little things about how they live. For example, who takes their shoes off when they enter? Yes. Um, what is the way that they say welcome to my home? Some people would greet you with a cup of tea and some food. Some people yes. would say, um, I'm leaving the key under the doormat. You can just let yourself in. Uh, and it's very different from person to person. That's true. Um, That's what it's true. how it's practiced. But I think the common thread for everyone is that um, people are kind, even when you don't expect them to be. Uh, what are the conditions when you are considering to host a traveler? I'm less likely to um, host somebody if I read their message and it looks like they didn't read my profile at all. Mm -hmm. um, they or they have some sort of strange requests. For example, some yep. people ask me where they can buy drugs and those people I don't respond Seriously? to. Uh, yes, yes. Um, I don't uh, personally like drugs in my home. So mm. if it's clear to me that somebody wants to bring them in, I won't let them in. If, if they're traveling like with an animal, like some people bring their dogs on, on vacation. I don't like dogs in my house. They're not the uh -huh. cleanest. Yeah. Um, no, my personal preference is uh, no animals, depending on what they say. For example, if they just say something like, oh, I need a place to stay for the night mm -hmm. and they don't suggest like uh, I could offer to cook you a meal or I could share right. stories with you or yep. I would right. love if you could point out to me some uh, local tips or something yep. where it's clear that we're not going to be interacting that much. I feel like. I don't get much out of it and they also don't get much out of it. So exactly. I'm yep. likely to say no. Also, yep. I do read, I don't like read every review word by word, but mm. uh, when I see somebody has a, a review that is like um, really, really negative, that yep. can point me off. And uh, also, you know, like how well they know English is important. <laughs> I love uh, meeting people from, other countries and across the world. But if we're not gonna be able to communicate, that is like um, a deal breaker for me. Mm. I haven't had any anybody I've let into my home and regretted it um, mm. because I think I've been pretty selective. I say yes to anybody who's really reasonable. Like for me, it's not super important where somebody comes from. Um, it doesn't matter to me really their age or 
if they're a man or a woman, gender doesn't matter, but um, it more matters to me if they seem like they're kind and courteous, respectful. Great. Is so, uh, religion I don't want and... to. Oh, really? Yeah, religion doesn't matter to me. Although, Wait. well, okay. If, <laughs> this is, I have to. <laughs> I have to explain okay. myself clearly. I okay. have had people message me where they were missionaries. Like people, they're Christians who travel to other countries in order to spread Christianity and to do certain work with, with churches. Okay. Like Mormons mm -hmm. do this, um, certain denominations of Christianity. Mm -hmm. And um, when it becomes clear to me that they want to come into my house, House because they want to preach to me, then I also would say no. Mm -hmm. um, for me, religion is, is a private thing. So I respect <laughs> people's right to practice and believe what they believe. And um, I need them to do the same thing to me. It doesn't matter yep. to me if someone's yep. Muslim, Jewish, Christian, Buddhist, atheist, doesn't matter <laughs> to me. Uh, because I am from Malaysia and most of people know that Malaysia is a Muslim country. So I will usually put in, in, I'm a Malaysian Chinese, I'm a Buddhist, because I'm afraid that some host, they might mind what religion you are. I don't know, but it's just my gut feel to do that because I've been like, sending a lot of quests to say, and yet I receive any feedback from the, the host. Sadly, there are people there are. who will discriminate. Personally, yeah. uh, you know, like, I'm a white guy from the United States, so yep. I'm not likely as likely to face mm -hmm. discrimination. But if if I were to see a host and um, I wouldn't want to stay with a host who is discriminatory in nature. When someone says something really bigoted or prejudiced, it's it's something that I also wouldn't want to host them. Somebody who's a little bit more moderate and like, you know, we can have a discussion and we can disagree, but we can share a worldview. You just have to be respectful to each other, that's it. I agree. <laughs> yep. Yeah. What, was, what was your worst experience with your server? Like you said, you have hosted about 20 over 29 servers. And mm -hmm. any bad one that you can remember? Yeah, um, I didn't have any bad experiences with one. Nothing that would like make me scared or unsafe. Mm -hmm. um, there's one that I just think was more disappointing. There was a guy who, um, he was from Portugal and um, he talked about um, needing a place to stay for the night and suggested some activities. And he was there for only one night, but he showed up like really late, like past 11, I was about to go to bed. And I went to bed and in the morning he was ready to go and he left and we barely talked. And uh, when he came in, he asked me like what my name was and where I was from. So he, yep. maybe he read my profile, but he just forgot because he was in a hurry. We didn't really get an opportunity. So I can't judge that. Mm. And I've yeah. had a couple of experiences where I've hosted someone. And then at the last minute, I found out I was going to be more busy. So uh, that was more like my planning, but we didn't get to spend time together. We didn't get to like share a meal or go explore some part of town. Since uh, traveling, I think it's impossible now. So maybe you can mm -hmm. share with the audience, you know, what are the top three attractions uh, in Prague? And of course, at the same time, the best foods in town. Mm. Mm -hmm. Food is a little bit easier. Um, <laughs> For Czech food, um, I really recommend Svičkova. Svičkova is a wonderful dish. Um, it's like a, uh, a brisket that is uh, cooked in the oven until it, it's soft with this great, wonderful sauce and some bread dumplings called knedliki in Czech. Um, and they serve it with some currant jelly and lemon on top. So it's got a little bit of tart and sour and some hearty meaty. It goes great with beer. I also recommend trying Czech goulash. Um, Czech goulash is, is more like a meat sauce, salsa dish. Okay. Um, and, and there are many different ways it can be prepared, but it's pretty good. And um, I recommend uh, palachinki. So those are Czech pancakes. They're very flat. They're somewhere where they're a little bit thicker than uh, crepes what you eat in France and thinner than 
what you'd eat in the United States. For example, we have like fluffier golden pancakes. Mm -hmm. There's a, you more have them for dessert than for breakfast, but you can get them at cafes and or as dessert and they'll fill them with fruit or whipped cream or mm. um, something sweet. So if you're a sweet tooth, you might like that. Right. As far as attractions in Prague, it all depends on what you like to do. Mm. Um, if you want to do sightseeing and see some of the, the great like monuments, mm. um, you can obviously consult a tour guide and you'll see all the architectural things and the government buildings. And I definitely recommend those, but mm. I also recommend visiting some of the parks and doing something like have a picnic and watch the sunset. Mm. Um, because it can be really nice and you see a lot of locals go out and do that too. I yeah. like Letzna. It's a park uh, to the north of the river and has uh, a giant sculpture called the Metronome. And during the summertime, they have live music, they have live disco, they have um, movies that they screen there depending on the day of the week. So it's something that um, tons of locals go to and expats go to it as well. I definitely recommend checking it out uh, because it's free and it's lovely. I really would recommend um, one of my activities that I have come to love is uh, feeding ducks and swans. Um, you can go along the river at a place called Naplavka um, on the riverbank. Um, it means like a waterway um, yep. or um, waterfront. And um, you can find all the, these birds and just bring like grapes or whole grain bread or something because sometimes people will yell at you for feeding them like white bread. It's not healthy for the birds. Uh -huh. um, but, but it's fun and you can uh, enjoy, there's people playing live music out there. You can get yourself yep. some coffee or a beer um, and maybe freshly grilled burgers or something, sausage yep. on a stick. And then I would also say, don't be afraid to leave the city center. So there's some really nice things, uh, some, some museums and libraries and bookstores yep. you can find. Yep. And uh, further south of the river, there's a, great place where we have a South American rodent called the Nutria. And um, they, they imported them and they live in the river and um, they look like large uh, rats or small beavers and you can feed them food and stuff. They're very friendly animals mm. and they're cute. Um, something mm -hmm. uh, you can do, it doesn't cost any money. You're not like missing out on what what locals do because this is a uh, people do very simple things to enjoy their time. What I love the most is also the old town square, which mm -hmm. is uh, somewhere Gorgeous. near your uh, somewhere near your apartments as well. Mm -hmm. Very very nice place. So it's one of the most visited places in the Czech Republic. It's famous for its astronomical clock mm -hmm. that Correct. tracks uh, the um, the constellations, mm -hmm. um, and the Czech word for that is orloj. And it is not the oldest clock in the Czech Republic. The oldest one is in Olomouc, which is a city in the east in Moravia. How far from? And that one is about... Uh, mm -hmm. um, Olomouc is about four, four hours by train. That is far. For me, it's not... But I come from New Mexico and my state is uh, <laughs> like two and a half times the, the land area of the Czech Republic. I and see. the Vietnamese community have a special name for Old Town Square. They call it yeah. Chicken Square. Why? Because and one of the buildings has um, a statue of a golden chicken over it. Chicken Square. Yeah, I learned something new today. Yeah. I, I learned it pretty recently as well. So, um, <laughs> I'm always learning new things about Prague. I've been living here uh, yeah. just about three years. Yeah. Um, so, you how find, do you find uh, Prague for you now? I mean, you love the city, don't you? Oh yeah, I love it here. I love this country. I love the mm -hmm. city. I have some great friends here. Um, mm -hmm. I'm pretty close to finishing my master's degree. Oh, and, happy for uh, you! I intend on staying here. How much do you know about my country, Malaysia? About Malaysia? And, uh, not, yeah. not much practically. Not much you haven't told me as well. I did have a couch surfer. He was American and he's lived all over the Caribbean and South and Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. He's told me that um, 
in in the streets like in, in thailand for example i don't know if this is also valid for um malaysia, malaysia. there will be monkeys and monkeys steal people's um keys Stop. or wallets sometimes Longings. yes they do um there are bands on a fruit called durians in some places because durians uh, they're like the spiky ball fruit i think this <laughs> is in thailand specifically but they're very stinky durian is actually popular in malaysia mm. oh it is okay Yeah, at least you know something about this. You talk about durian, so it also some kind of relate to Malaysia. Yeah, mm. but Thailand's durian to me not as popular as ours. Taste not as good as what we have in Malaysia. Let's say if you have chance to travel to Malaysia, I'll bring you to try different variety of durians. You know, people especially from the western side where you live don't like the taste. Uh, mm. But you should try anyway. Never, never try, never try. know. Some... I've tried escargot, the French snail dish where you eat snails. Yeah. That was the worst thing I've ever tasted in my life. Mm. Um, so <laughs> I'm not afraid to, to try. I suck it, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey. Yeah, I mean yeah. they have like garlic and butter on it. It doesn't right. help. It just yes. it's like you're sucking out of someone's nose. It's just disgusting. Mm, I yeah. don't like it. I, I tried, <laughs> I it, tried as it. I tried it. Not yeah. good. So I don't actually know this, but I'm guessing. Do you drive on the left side of the road? Yep, you drive. On the That's left more side. of a guess because of uh, British colonialism. Yes. Most of the places Brit the British colonized still drive on the left. Not Malta. Vietnam. Vietnam, they are a different side. U.S. Yeah. as well is a different side, right? Yeah, we drive on the right side yeah, of the road. Yeah, yeah, the right side. It was it was difficult for me um, last summer. Mm. Uh, actually, this was two summers ago now. I spent some time in summer camps teaching English. I went to Ireland and I was teaching to some Polish students who went to Ireland mm. to study. And then I also spent time in Malta. Malta is a it's a small island, so there's not many times where like um, most, most of the roads are narrow that like you can't have two cars going past. If they're going to come, they have to drive wow. to the side okay. to allow the other one to pass. Um, and both those countries had former British rule mm. and they still drive on the left side of the road. But mm. in Ireland, uh, it's very strange because I look both ways. I look both ways. I look both ways and I still don't see the cars coming because they just drive on, on the other side of the road and it's it just messes everything up <laughs> even though i i'm aware that they're driving on the other side i still just can't anticipate it it's very weird let's say if you travel to malaysia will you try to couch surfing oh definitely that would probably be the the first thing i try when i travel to any new country um okay. is to see if i i can couch surf there yep. um Okay. Definitely reconnect with people I've already met, yep. meet new people, and yep. know the place from a different perspective than I would from just like uh, the tourist side. You should at least uh, stay in my house for once in your life. Let me host <laughs> you and bring you for some nice uh, food as well, local food, especially durians. <laughs> Which you already mentioned. <laughs> I look I, forward to I, it. Nice. Maybe it will be to my taste. Yep, maybe we'll find out. <laughs> Do you mind if I share your CS profile in case any oh, yeah, of my yeah go ahead yeah in case That's any nice. of my audience they, they they are traveling to Clark in the future and they are also looking for a nice host. Sure, sure. Great. That's uh, no problem for me, and uh, we'll see when travel is uh, opportune. But uh, yep. yeah, I really want to thank you for spending your time today. Oh, yes, like, thank you for an hour. It's actually good that we stay in touch. And also, I'm happy meeting you. Yeah, I was I was uh, happy to hear from you and uh, see what you're <laughs> doing. Yeah, I wish you have a good day. Yes, uh, thank look you. Look forward you to well. see you again. So yeah. I look forward to that and uh, hosting or surfing again someday. And uh, have a good rest of your day. Thank you very much, Mitch. You take care and uh, all the best to your master study. Mm -hmm. Once you, you graduate, much. let me know. Right? Sure, so I'll send you a message. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye.